What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another MLB Total Chaos. I'm your host, Allie Burns from Picks and Parlays. And don't forget about the official sponsor of Picks and Parlays. It's Caesar Sportsbook. They're hooking up all new accounts with up to $1,100 in first bet insurance. Use the promo code MORNINGCZR or just check out the description of this video and find the link. Before we get rolling, let's all like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. With me today, I've got the Winners and Winers crew. Chris King, it's been a long time since you've been in the total chaos ring. You've got a record of 9 and 11. How are you feeling to be back, friend? I still say my record's 57 and 6. <laughs> you uh, haven't done that man. many chaoses. Hey, every day is chaos. Just because <laughs> it doesn't end up here doesn't mean that it's not chaos. All right. Well, I don't do those stats on you. I only do these stats on you. Scott Steen from Back to the Window with Scott and Scott. You've got a record of 1923 and one. How are you feeling, friend? I feel like I'm on a boat and I'm listing. I just noticed I'm listing towards the left. I'm I'm, I'm a little bit towards port here. So <laughs> apologies. Wait a minute. If I lean this way. Okay. Now it looks straight. Perfect. <laughs> I I'm, see that. I'm a little seasick, but other than that, I'm fine. I'm ready to improve on my 19 and 23 mark. It's so, so sad that uh, that's not just terrible, but uh, it's the, uh, I'm, I'm with the, I'm with the right crew to have that record. <laughs> it's not as bad as it could be. Trust me. I um, 80 for the Royals. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Scott Reichel's 18, 26 and one. How are you feeling, Scott? Yeah, feel fine. I'm hitting my plays of the day, so that's the most important priority I have. But overall in the show, could be better, is what it is. Let's just say that for the plays of the day, I'm not taking many totals. Okay. Does that help to narrow it down a little bit? <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, so so you don't get fined. Yeah, pretty much. That's fair. Just it's, in my, sorry, it's in my imaginary fine. contract, you know? That's what Lenny always tells me. He's just here so he doesn't get fined, um, which is fair is fair. Um, so if anyone hasn't seen the show before, I'm going to give you five MLB games. They're going down this Wednesday, May the 18th. These th three guys from Winners and Winers are going to tell me if they go over or under the total. We're going to start this party off with the Mariners at the Blue Jays. The number's eight. We got Gonzalez, Gonzalez and Gausman on the mound. Chris King, what do you got? I think this one's going to stay under. I mean, if you look at the numbers, Toronto's 21, 14, and 1 to the under this season. Gaussman's got an area of 240, and he's averaging better than six innings to start. I'm not sold on Seattle's offense. Uh, Scott and I have talked about it multiple times on, on the show where every time we think they're going to do something, they turn around and put up almost nothing on the scoreboard. You look at Toronto's 22nd in, in offense. The Mariners are 20th. I don't see this getting to 8.5. I think it's going to stay under. Scott Reichel, what do you think? I'm going with the under as well. Uh, every point that Chris just said, plus the fact that Seattle is especially awful offensively on the road. They're just not a very good road team. And Marco Gonzalez has been okay this season. Last two starts, though, been pretty solid. 12 innings pitch, three runs total. So I do think he should pitch well once again. I see this game probably finishing around four to three, something like that. But I really don't see Seattle doing much help or providing much help in this spot. Steen, are we going to make it a hat trick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Galsman has just been outstanding so far since he's come over from San Francisco this season to Toronto. Quality starts in his last five with a 1.83 ERA, 0.87 whip, and an almost unbelievable 0.94 FIP you never see. And that is mainly because he's got such a high swing and miss rate in those five starts, 17% swing and miss. That is outstanding. Uh, Seattle's kind of middle of the pack as far as strikeouts go. I, I like the under here as well. I think Toronto would have to do any all of the heavy lifting to get it over the total. And Gonzalez has been fine. He went through a spate early in the season uh, where he's given up unearned runs. He's given up 33 runs on the season, but 12 of them have been unearned. He does give up a ton of home runs, eight home runs in 32 innings. I see this more like a 5-1, uh, a 5-2 to one, five to two kind of game. Ooh, all right, all right. So moving right along, we're talking the Cardinals at the Mets. The number on this one is seven. We've got Hicks and Scherzer. Rachel, you go first. I think seven's a pretty sharp number, but I am going to go under. Scherzer has been amazing. What else is new? And you look at his overall numbers at home, he's been very solid. 20 innings pitch, 2.7 ERA. You have Hicks on the mound for St. Louis, who's been okay, but he doesn't really go much length. The bright side is that the Cardinals have a 3.38 bullpen ERA, 
which ranks ninth in the league. I think you'll see runs at a premium here. It's going to be an ugly game, a low-scoring game. Give me a 3-2 final. 3-2 final. Steen, what do you think? Yeah, I'm on I'm on um I'm on board the under here as well. Um I'm again this is it was just one of those mitch matches. I wish we were I could I could play a team total because mm -hmm. I, if it was I could play team, team totals, I would have played a couple team total overs in, in these first two games. Mm -hmm. Uh again, Scherzer's been fantastic. Jordan Hicks trying to make the uh, the jump from flamethrower out of the bullpen to starting pitcher. It hasn't gone well as he uh you know, it, we've we've talked about this before. It's sometimes very difficult for a really hard thrower to come in and learn how to pitch at 85, 90% to be a starter and conserve that energy. Consequently, he doesn't go long, but he has given up at least two home runs in every start, at least two runs in every start. Neither one of these guys gave up a ton of home runs. Hicks has given up just one dinger in his 17 and two thirds. Scherzer gave up three to the Phillies, but other than that, he's had it locked down, given up just two home runs in the other 38 innings. I think this is a situation a lot like the last one where one team is going to do a lot better than the other, but I still think it stays under the total. Chris King, your thoughts. I agree with both the Scots. I mean, if you look, the Cardinals don't hit right-handed pitching worth anything. They're hitting 235 as a team against right-handers. Uh, and the way Scherzer's pitched, it's hard to go against him. And I, and Scott's right. We've talked about Hicks before. And it's great that you can throw 100 miles an hour, but you can't do it uh, and, a, and a starter's role with the way he's come out of the bullpen in his career. And we saw the first game today when it was Nicholas and Trevor Williams. That game ended up 3-1. to one. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot more runs here. I'm going to stick with the under as well. Okay, okay. We agree on our first two. That, like, almost never happens. But remember, those tend to be the money makers on the show. Scott Steen, you're going to start us off with the Pirates of the Cubs. It's seven and a half with Keller and Smiley. And it's also amazing that we have an overnight on a Cubs game. What do you got on this one, Scott? Yeah, wind's going to be blowing in from the north-northwest, which means it's going to be basically right in the face of the, of the right-handed hitters. You know, I, I, I can't believe it that I'm thinking about taking a low with, uh, with, with uh, an under with Mitch Keller on the mound, but you know, you've got to, you've got to really have some no, no skill sets at all when you're known as the, the bad Keller in the major leagues, but six plus ERA, but the pirates just aren't scoring anything. They're not hitting the ball. They're not putting runs across the plate. Oh God. All right. Yeah. This is, this is one obviously that, uh, that I struggled with the most. Give me the oh, give me the under seven and a half. Boy, that that hurt. It, it physically hurt to do that. I'll take the under. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta hold your nose and take the bet. It could, it, could be, it could be seven nothing Cubs. It really. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Chris King, what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, as a as a fan of of the Cubs and knowing how the things play at Wrigley Field, even with bad pitching, sometimes you don't get a lot of runs on the board. I mean, and you look at the Pirates in the last. Five games, they scored a total of six runs. Uh, you know, they won the other day without getting a hit. They only had three hits yesterday. Can you really count on the Pirates to put anything on the board? I mean, like Scott said, this could be a seven nothing game and still stay under the total. Drew Smiley's pitched pretty well. I, you know, his record doesn't reflect it, but he's got a 364 earned run average. And the Cubs bullpen has been quietly semi decent outside of Michael Givens. Uh, trying to give games away. That I think is quite this a gonna end up because, Quietly semi-decent. That is quite an endorsement, buddy. <laughs> well, this comes from a guy who was just touting how you can't fault Bobby Witt for hitting 213. Just saying. In the land of the shoeless, the man with one shoe is king, my friend. <laughs> this is true. But I think this one's going to stay under. I, I think it's probably going to be you know a 4-1 or 5-1 five, five type of game. I just don't trust the Pirates to put enough on the board to push it over. Rachel, do you agree with these two? I understand it just based on the fact that Pittsburgh can hit, but I am going to take the over. I feel like it's a good spot to potentially be a bit contrarian here because of the fact that both pitchers are awful. To go through the numbers, Keller is pitching for Pittsburgh, 32 and two-thirds innings pitched, 6.61 ERA. Smiley overall has been okay. However, at home, he's been awful. Nine and one third innings pitched, 5.79 ERA. I understand that Pittsburgh can hit. I'm hoping they can get one or two across, but you mentioned how Chicago might win 7 nothing. The fact that they could score seven runs is good enough for me because I think Keller is pretty, is pretty bad. 
Give me the over. I'm hoping Chicago potentially goes over this by themselves. But a nice 6-2 final, good enough for me. All right, all right. We're moving on to the yeah, Angels. You put a lot of faith Rangers. on Sarah to score two. A lot of faith. It's maybe just smiling at that. Two twenty-two. You know, you know, you know expect them to score two runs. This is just one game, not a series. So we're yeah. the two yeah. runs there for the Pirates. They're due. I believe that's the term you should use, right? Yeah, that's They're right. Due. Second, say, second batter today. Second batter for the Pirates, though, got a hit today. So that means they're in line for maybe two runs tomorrow. We'll see. Right. Baby steps. Right. Uh, we got the Angels at the Rangers. It is seven and a half. Chris King, you are going first. Otani and Dunning, what do you say? Well, I mean, Otani has been up and down because you'll see him turn in a good outing and then he'll turn around and, you know, lay an egg. Uh, we talked about this yesterday when we were talking about the way Syndergaard has pitched too because we thought he was great and then he turned around and bombed out. Um, I'm not sold on Dunning because he's another guy that's been very inconsistent. Texas, if you're going to talk about guys that are due, Marcus Simeon is due to hit a homer one of these years. Mm. And he hit, what, 45 last year, and he's done nothing this season. I'm going to look for this one to end up over. I think seven and a half is a little low, especially playing in the uh, friendly park that Globe Life Field is. Mm. I'm going to look for this one to end up being 6'3", something like that, and end up over the number. That's part of why it's so crazy that Simeon hasn't been hitting homers is the park he's playing in. Um, Rochelle, I believe, no, yeah, you are next. Okay, I know what I'm doing, I swear to God. Over okay. under. I'm going with the over on this one as well. Otani has already faced the Rangers this season. First start did not go well. Three and two-thirds innings pitched six earned runs. Dunning is pitching for Texas. And his numbers against the Angels, or I should say the Angels' numbers against him, are, well, amazing because the active batters on the Angels roster – 41 plate appearances, a 492 batting average, and a 513 on base percentage. They absolutely destroyed Dunning, and I think they should once again. Seven halfs too low because I also don't really like either bullpen. So I do think pitching mm. should be a concern. I think either offense can go nuts or both can chip in. But seven halfs based on Otani's reputation, he's already yeah. gotten shelled by Texas once this season. I think he'll struggle once again. All right, all right, Scott Steen. Are we getting in the car here? Yeah, every every year I every year I hear this this Dunning kid. This is his year. He's going to be good. And uh, yeah, wake me when that happens. It hasn't happened yet. You know, here's what I find fascinating with Otani on the mound. Theoretically, it costs the Angels a hitter, right? You don't have it. You don't have a designated hitter because you're going to have Otani in the lineup anyway. But when Otani pitches, the Angels have averaged 5.2 runs per game with him on the mound. So. Uh, they've been playing well over their last 10. They've averaged 5.5 runs per game. Uh, I'm with you. Um, the Texas Rangers haven't given Dunning much support in, in spite of the fact he's been bad. His games have averaged less than seven and a half runs. I think the Angels can change that around. I've got the over in this one as well. And Scott mentioned this is a rematch of a game from April the 14th. Uh, that one lane, uh, ended up 10-5, so they doubled it up. I'll take it. The sad yeah. part about that is Dunning has the second best ERA on the starting staff for the Rangers, and it's at 406. Yeah. I mean, that's just scary. When you look at the other guys, Hearns at 526, Gray's at 573, and Glenn Otto is at 638. Welcome to the new Who age. Who thought that Martin would be the ace of the Rangers staff? Mm. No kidding. All right, all right. Okay, so last one for the round. We're talking the White Sox at the Royals, seven and a half with Giolito and Grinky on the mound. Rachel, you're first up. So for this one, I can't believe I'm going to take an over with a Pirates game and a Royals game in the same video, but I'm going to do it because I am not sold in either pitcher. You know, Velasquez, yeah, potentially drunk. Uh, that remains to be determined. But Velasquez is pitching for Chicago, and in night games this year, he's been awful. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I got Giolito. I have Giolito. Yeah, yeah, MLB has Giolito on there. I had Velasquez earlier when I did my research. Um, yeah, I'm still going to go with the over. Screw it. You know, uh, Granke is also terrible at night. Ten innings pitched, 6.3 ERA. Both teams bullpen-wise have really been awful as well. Kansas City ranks 25th in bullpen ERA. Chicago ranks 20 or tied for 23rd. And I'm looking at Giolito's numbers because that was a little bit of a twist. And one thing we do know about him, he tends to pitch to a lot of contact. And I do think that Kansas City has enough uh, power bats per se whenever they actually make contact with the ball. but Overall, for me, I think that Giolito is still 
I'd say a bit of an overrated commodity. Can I say that? Because he has not yeah. been great for the last couple of years. Granky has not been good in night games. I'm going to go ahead and take the over. Because even though people might expect Giolito to potentially pitch well because of how well he looked a couple of years ago, I think he might struggle in this one. Give me the over. Yeah, it was a breakout guy that broke out and then went right back in. He had the no-hitter and then his career just right down the it's, drain. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, Before, I want him to do well, though. Like, I root for Gio, but it just it's not it's not there. What do you think, Steen? What do you think? Before Giolito broke out, there was one team that he dominated when he was a terrible, terrible pitcher, <laughs> and it was the Kansas City Royals. Uh, he was It was like magic. He would come in and give you kind of a glimpse of what he was going to be three years in the future. However... Since he's become a decent pitcher, he's done really poorly against the Royals. In fact, his last three starts, he has given up a total of 16 earned runs over just 16 innings. I'm no math major, but I'm pretty sure that's a round in nine ERA. So this is a Royals team that has had some success against Giolito. Of course, they have a lot of new faces there. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm with Reichel in this one. This is kind of a tough one for me because Grinky. Uh, is another guy that pitches contact. He doesn't have a lot of strikeouts. His his uh, his strikeout uh, his strikeout pitches are pretty are pretty much non-existent. So, uh, but he doesn't give up a lot of home runs. He's only given up two home runs on the season. Uh, this could be a grinder. This could be a uh, uh, you know three three uh, type of game there late in the game. But I think between the with the bullpens, where Kansas City is a bad bullpen and they've been even worse at home. And uh, I think that's going to ultimately be the difference as the Royals have shown a really, really uh, in a, an ability, inability to uh, hold on to leads late in games. So, uh, again, this could be one where we, you don't get worried early. I think it'll be fine late. I would take the over. All right, Chris King, how are you feeling about it? I'm going to go the other way. I just have no faith in the Royals. We were talking about it before the show started. They went 0 for 12 with runners in scoring position today. Uh, like in the first game against Dylan Cease and company, in a three nothing game, uh, like Scott said, they hit the bases loaded with nobody out and still couldn't put a run on the board. Uh, as bad as Giolito was last season, and he was bad, and a lot of that came in the second half of the year when he seemed to have shoulder fatigue and then spent time on the uh, on the IL. In his career against the Royals, he's eight and four with a three forty three earned run average and seventeen starts, and he still got a WHIP below one. Uh, we know Imagine Kansas City that likes. To Imagine how good that was before he got lit up his last three, because mm. it's it's still pretty respectable. True. But yeah, we're also talking about the Kansas City team where you know they make uh, Mendoza Mario Mendoza look like an all star, and you know the way the Royals aren't hitting, I can't put faith in them to put up enough runs in this game. And the White Sox haven't been great offensively either. Uh, I think this one's going to end up probably a four two type of game and end up short of the number. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so a little disagreement on that last one. No big whoops. Someone's got to win the game, right? So we're going to do a recap if you guys are just joining us. But before we do that, I want to tell you where you can find these guys when they're not on Total Chaos. Um, so my show is Morning Wood. It goes on Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. But right after me, we've got Just Parlays with Chris King at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can find him at Betting Royalty. Chris, tell the people at home what your show is all about. Well, the title pretty much sums it up for you, though Scott and I do like to talk about other random stuff. Like today we talked about Shark Tank. And uh, what else we talk about, Scott? Uh, it's, it's hard to say, buddy. I'm sure we went down some dark paths. <laughs> uh, we, we, you know, we we talk about parlays. We've had some good success. Well, I should say I have because Steam just sits there and goes, "Yeah, you know, I'm I'm on board with that a lot." And then you know, proceeds to then go on a marrying tangent about something else, uh, completely ir irrelevant to what was going on in the particular on slide. But you know, uh, we have a good time, and you're um, making this a hard sale. You're making this a hard sale for viewers. I'm just teasing you. I'm teasing. I mean, I don't. I don't think it's a hard sale. I mean, we had a six teamer on Friday that paid out over ten grand on a uh, on a hundred dollar bet. You should have uh, opened with that. You should have opened with that right there. That was an opener. <laughs> no, we like that, just, we're the closers. We're not the openers. You know, those openers are people that only throw an inning and then get pulled out. We're the people that close things around here. 
All right. All right. Um, so find Chris King at Betting Royalty. Find him Monday through Friday on Just Parlays at 2 p.m. Eastern, followed by Back to the Window with Scott and Scott Steen. You kind of make a transition from Just Parlays into Back to the Window, but you do all kinds of shows. Um, tell us all about them. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> no, and moving on it's like no, pulling I, cake with you guys we do have a, we do have a lot of fun where chris and i lay out the parlays and uh he's right he's the one that makes the slides and they are it is pretty much his baby if you asked me to do to draw up uh six parlays a day uh i'd probably shoot yeah. myself so uh and he has really done well. yes yeah. he, he has really done well this week he hit a six teamer he's hit a couple four teamers uh he's had a monster week so yeah check that out and then scott and i do our thing Back to the window with Scott and Scott, where we review, we review at yesterday's action, take a look at uh, what's coming up for the uh, day games, the night games that we still have a shot to bet on. And we talk to people in real time and, uh, you know, give advice if they ask for it on their plays. And a lot of times, honestly, when they don't ask for it, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let them know what we think. Uh, totally, totally unprompted. That's kind of what we do. So, yeah. And the main thing is we have some fun. We talk to people in real time and it's a blast. We have sound well, effects, damn it. We have sound, we have effects. sound we have, effects. We have sound effects and music, yeah. All right. Well, find Scott Steen at Steen Roller over on Twitter. And this is the other Scott from Back to the Window with Scott. And Scott, Scott Reichel, find him at Reichel Radio. What are you doing over at Reichel Radio, friend? Uh, mostly ranting about stuff, but I also do my daily free play of the day, which has done really well lately. So hopefully that carries over into Tuesday. As for me personally, I'll be in Vegas next week. So I'm going to be keeping yeah. busy doing some podcasts, stuff like that. And yeah, looking and forward to it. Out of the, out of the borders of Brooklyn? Uh, yes. In fact, I'm actually being paid. Yeah, we, we, talked about yesterday that, you know, so. we talked about yesterday that, you know, we found out that your border to, to cross the, uh, to leave Brooklyn and go into New Jersey was $650 in free bets. And they were going to expire in two days. And I spent all 650 on the Mavericks money line in game seven. So mission accomplished. Woo! And I'm looking, I'm happy to, uh, yeah, potentially, I'd say use some of those winnings in Vegas next week. Let's put it that way. Nice. I, ne I never asked you how did you how did you uh, get it how did you get to across the bridge? Uh, my roommate and I ended up going for lunch, and we ended up just stopping over and placing bets and stuff. He he drove though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. All right. Shenanigans, I say. Shenanigans. Okay. Um, so let's do a quick recap for everyone. I want to remind you, if you haven't already, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and then ring that bell so you get notified every time we go on and give you free content like Total Chaos. And if you're looking for a new book, if you're looking for your first book, check out Caesar's Sportsbook. They're going to hook up all new accounts with $1,100 in first bet insurance, up to $1,100 with first bet insurance. Um, again, the link is in the description of the video or just use the promo code morning CZR. Um, okay. And don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell for winners and whiners, winners and whiners on Twitter, um, on YouTube, find them, subscribe to them. They've got a lot of good stuff going on. Okay. So let's do our recap. Mariners and the Blue Jays is an eight and a half. We all agree. It goes under cards in the Mets is a seven. We all agree that goes under. Ran into some turmoil here with the Pirates and the Cubs. Rachel's going over. The other two are going under. Angels and the Rangers, seven and a half. Back on track. We're all going over. But the White Sox at the Royals, seven and a half. Chris King goes under and the Scots take it over. That's how we're playing this round of MLB Total Chaos. Like I always say, may the best capper win. Good luck, y'all. Thanks, Lyle.